Hi, friends. So uh, I wanted to quickly address something that, uh, you know, the, the mainstream media has been putting out there shamelessly about Julian Assange. And um, it's, it's really about his personal hygiene and all that sort of thing, and uh, that his time in the Ecuadorian embassy was some kind of sort of like a frat party of some kind, you know, like where he's just sort of doing all sorts of crazy things, including the claim by the mainstream corporate-owned media that he was uh, smearing feces on the wall. This is so, this is just such a sad indictment of the corporate media that this is the sort of nonsense that they, they put out. They don't even recognize the uh, terrible predicament they're actually all in, the, the press, the so-called press, you know, this pre these stenographers that call themselves journalists. They don't realize this precedent that is being set if Assange is extradited to the U.S., to face basically 45 years of solitary confinement and torture and uh, possibly execution. They don't realize the, the mainstream corporate-owned press and the Murdoch press here in Australia who are ignoring it at, at best or smearing him, um, Julian Assange, is that they can also be extradited. If they say anything inconvenient to U.S. empire, if they say any, in, anything inconvenient about war crimes, anything about war crimes, basically anything that the U.S. has, the U.S. empire, and I call it an empire because it has a thousand bases worldwide um, that we know of, um, anything that's inconvenient to empire exposing war crimes and corruption, they too, any of these so-called journalists, and I use that word lightly, uh, can be extradited to the U.S. to face the same kind of thing that Julian Assange is facing. And they're silly, they're so silly, they think that they're exempt from this because somehow they're, they think because they're, they're protected if they're just promoting a government narrative, if they're just promoting what the government wants them to. The, the government, at, at some point, depending on how, you know, how much they uh, travel into authoritarianism, into that, that area, um, and the governments become authoritarian, it, it, they can decide whatever they want uh, is inconvenient. Any, any sort of criticism whatsoever will become, won't be confined to one country like the US. Other countries will start adopting this as well. It will become a trend <clears throat> because all governments lie, so they don't want to be held accountable. The fourth estate was supposed to hold governments accountable, but they do not. And Julian Assange is one of the last, uh, and WikiLeaks are one of the last bastions of free press. There are independent journalists in the world who are doing great work. They're not stenographers for empire. They're not stenographers that ignore corruption and government crimes, etc. But there are a very small few in the world, really, compared to the powerful corporate media that puts out propaganda. So, um, you know, these silly, silly, silly uh, so-called journalists and, uh, you know, these talking heads on these various corporate news sites don't realize that they are also in the crosshairs eventually because it never stops at one person. Once you get away with extraditing a journalist who has been helping whistleblowers um, deliver much-needed information to the public about what's going on, once you do something like that and you actually um, use criminal law uh, to... to suppress information. That's, that's the heading towards dictatorship. You know, th this, is, this is the sort of thing that's happening right now, right now in real time. So I wanted to just uh, briefly talk about, <coughs> briefly talk about uh, Fidel Navez, uh, who was a uh, former diplomat at the embassy. He actually lived in the Ecuadorian embassy in London while Julian Assange was a uh, you know, there, and, um, and he says, Julian Assange was put through hell at the embassy. He said, uh, he says that Julian Assange was 100% respectful. I put that in quotes, 100% respectful, but claims he suffered from a government p plot to force him out. Uh, Julian Assange was always respectful, but went through hell in the Ecuadorian embassy as officials tried to, quote, break him down. End quote. According to a former senior diplomat, Fidel Navez, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm sorry if I'm massacring that name, worked at the London Embassy for six of the seven years. The WikiLeaks figurehead lived there and says they became friends. 
He was speaking to Sky News, and that's interesting. I'm surprised that Sky News had him on um, because, uh, you know, they've been all part of this uh, weird uh, sort of trying to basically dehumanize Assange for a very long time or ignoring him. They've pro- pretty much been ignoring him, the mainstream media, uh, intentionally until this time when it's uh, possibly they can get more, you know, clicks, more, more views. That's really what it's about. The mainstream media isn't about, you know, informing the public. It's really about how many clicks they can get in at the present and how much attention they can get over drama. And this is sort of like they consider this is sort of a, uh, only, they consider it only newsworthy because that people are focusing on it because he's been expelled from the embassy and that he might be possibly extradited. So that's all sort of drama that they love and they think that they'll get more advertising money And, you know, this is why they're focusing on it. It's simply about, uh, you know, capitalism, really, (laughs) making profit. Anyway, so, but, you know, this is a good, I I tip my hat to them for this thing, uh, where Sky News has been interviewing Fidel Neves. um, And it says, speaking to Sky News, Fidel Neves disputed claims that Assange had assaulted guards, didn't clean up after himself, didn't take care of his pet, cat, and even smeared human excrement on on the walls of the embassy, end quote. He said... He said, Julian had a respectful relationship with staff, diplomats, and administrative staff. I don't recall a single incident where he disrespected someone until I left in July 2018. Quote, he said, uh, I was there the first months of the last year, and I witnessed when Julian was told that he would no longer be allowed to have internet or phone or access to the phone and wouldn't be able to have visitors. The strategy was very clear break him down, the government didn't know how to end the asylum and face the catastrophic historical shame for doing that, end quote. Well, they they were able to, the Ecuadorian embassy, Elena Marino rather, was able to uh, to face the catastrophic historical shame because he, he received, not only did his bank account, his personal bank account swell tremendously, but um, he also, the U.S. approved a loan uh, from the IMF via the IMF to uh, to him in Ecuador for 4.2 billion. Uh, I think there was some extra money too. I don't know. There was a lot of money. It was more than 4.2, I think. But anyway, um, so you know, that was the uh, the ransom ransom point for Lena Marino to hand over Julian Assange and face the historical shame for doing that uh, was this 4.2 million, and also that his bank accounts are magnificently um, increased now. His personal wealth. So that's what, you know, that's, that's the sort of um, leader in quotes that Lena Marino is. And I hope that he, um, you know, that he is haunted by what might happen or what has previously happened, how he's made that uh, Julian Assange, who is simply a journalist, a journalist uh, publisher whose only crime in quotes is journalism, and helping expose corruption and war crimes, which is what all journalists are supposed to do, what the free press is supposed to do, and he's being made to pay for that. He's being made to pay in particular for um, things like the WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks collateral murder video, and also that was released uh, to, to WikiLeaks by uh, whistleblower Chelsea Manning. And, um, you know, and the other thing, and uh, one of the other things, there was many things that were released by WikiLeaks exposing corruption, particularly about the U.S. There was even Russia was in, and, um, they leaked stuff about Russia too. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, the pedestrian emails, which I think helped bring down Hillary Clinton because people saw how corrupt she was. This is the sort of thing that WikiLeaks does. It exposes corruption, exposes uh, war crimes, because the mainstream media doesn't talk about any of this really. The mainstream media doesn't talk about war crimes or even any so anything about war. The only way to find out about war, what's really going on, is a few independent journalists. So anyway, it's very, very sad. And, um, and also I wanted to just sh- uh, show you a tweet uh, by someone who uh, basically was indicating that... Um, you know, since since Lenin Marino has and and the Ecuadorian embassy have been filming everything, everything that Julian Assange has been doing, as far as I can tell from the time he entered the embassy seven years ago, um, they've been filming every single thing, including his medical exams with his doctor, which is just outrageous. The man had absolutely no privacy. He was like full-on Big Brother in there for all that time, 
And if it really, if there was any truth in this whole excrement smearing nonsense, they could easily, easily provide that video. Easily. So this is all, and they could easily provide any evidence of, um, you know, something like any of the claims that they've made. Any. But they don't. And why? Because it's not true. It's complete lies, and it's meant to dehumanize Julian Assange. So that it makes it easier for everybody to lose interest in, in him and think, what an awful person. Oh, he deserves to. I mean, you don't break asylum for somebody. You don't, you don't revoke asylum for a political pers a political, in a political asylum situation because somebody isn't nice and you don't like them. And, and this whole thing about people not supporting Julian Assange because they don't like him. Please, grow up. This is not about whether you like him or do not like him. And remember, a lot of stuff put out about him is, is actually propaganda to dehumanize him. I, I, don't, I, I don't know Julian Assange. Um, I know that he is incredibly brave, though. I don't agree with everything that he has said or his connections on Twitter with some alt-writers. Um, I don't agree with that. But I know that he is a, a hero, that he is incredibly courageous. I, I couldn't last a month of the sort of solitary confinement type thing with no exercise, no getting out, and particularly in the last year with no contact, no internet, no phone, hardly any people able to visit him. And when they do, it's, they're listened upon and everything is, you know, they're, he's surveilled constantly. And having the health problems that he has and being away from one's family, all of those things, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The psychological and physical torture that that whole existence in that um, Ecuadorian embassy, all that time. And no support from my awful government here. Either, you know, the Labour government when it was in office or this coalition, this awful right-wing coalition government and any of the any of the federal politicians, most of them, 99.9% of them said nothing, have said nothing about him this last seven years. It's a disgrace. But if I was in that situation, I, I don't think I would last a month, maybe not even two weeks. He was there for seven years. You know, I mean, the fact that people can't even appreciate that, what is wrong with people? They can't even appreciate the, you know, what he has gone through. And every time WikiLeaks released something about uh, some corruption or something about the U.S. empire, it was another nail in that man's coffin, and he knew it. This, you know, is a savage, rogue empire, the U.S. empire. They're actually, they do the opposite to what they claim they are. But most people don't realize that. And why? Because we don't have a, we don't have a press that is, we don't have a fourth estate anymore that will actually say what's going on. They're just stenographers. So, you know, every time WikiLeaks released something about, you know, some U.S. politician like Hillary Clinton or about war or the war crimes or whatever, anything that exposed and embarrassed the government and the empire is was one more nail in his coffin and he knew it but he did it anyway that that to me is a some is a hero is somebody who is is basically pretty much sacrificed their life for information being able to get out to the public and because of all the war crimes and the well war is a crime but every, you know the collateral murder thing is happening every day in iraq if you if you um listen to Iraq veterans that are telling the truth about what goes on there. It's a daily thing. It's a church, it's a Christ church massacre every day. That's what it is. It's a collateral murder video every day. That's not an aberration what happened in collateral murder, that video released from, uh, by Chelsea Manning, who now is in prison too. It's a savage empire. That's not an aberration what you see in that collateral murder video. So anyway, the, you know, anybody who's sort of, oh, I don't like him. I don't like him, you know. Just grow up, for God's goodness sake. Get a grip. You don't realize what's going on. If that's, what you, if that's your excuse for not saying anything, I don't like him. 
You know, seriously, what kind of babies, how infantilized have we become? I mean, this is sort of like, this is like in real time where it's tipping over into fascism, into it's tipping towards fascism. This is what fascist governments do. They get rid of anybody who speaks out against the government, anybody who is exposing crimes and, and war crimes and, and corruption. That's what fascist governments do. That's what Hitler did in the poisonous kitchen, getting rid of journalists. You don't even have to execute people to get rid of them. You don't even have to go that far. You just have to have a, 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 a very obedient press that will say whatever you want them to say, get the talking points, like the CIA virtually is embedded, has been embedded for a long time. This is a proven thing. Look up Operation Mockingbird. And they've even admitted in 1981, the uh, uh, de director um, of, of the CIA at the time said, we'll know when we've been successful, when every, what, and everything that the public hears and sees is... Um, is, is basically false, you know, when they believe what, what it, you know, when everything that is put out there is basically propaganda. I'll put up a little meme and what he said. You know, this, is, this is where we're at. And, you know, so, you know, th these governments, governments that are allowed to do that and get away with that, this extradition of Julian Assange, you know, the U.S. is a rogue state that is actually um, the greatest threat to world peace today. And I'm going to show you a little excerpt from something that I saw the other day. Jimmy Carter was talking about how, you know, the U.S. is now just, um, the, you know, is basically the... Oh, hold on a second, I'll, I'll find what he said. I can't find the actual, um, the actual piece, what, what um, Jimmy Carter said. But he was basically saying that the U.S. is like um, out of... You know, it's a, it's a major threat. It's the, the greatest sort of you know, warmongering um, sort of uh, country in, in the history of the world, basically. Something to that effect. But I wanted to read a, just a little bit from this um, article, the same article that he was talking about this. Jimmy Carter is, you know, the, um, one of the U.S. presidents. And he's not, uh, he's not a clean slate, slate either when it comes to, you know, he was involved in uh, various things um, as well, problems, problematic behavior. You know, all these U.S. presidents have been involved in problematic behavior. Anyway, in this article, it said, while, while there is this prevalent belief in the United States that the country almost always wages war for noble purposes and in defense of freedom, global public opinion and facts paint a very different picture. Most countries surveyed in 2013 WIN stroke Gallup poll identified the United States as the greatest threat to world peace. And a 2017 Pew Research poll found that a number, a record number of people in 30 surveyed nations viewed the U.S. power and influence as a, quote, major threat, end quote. The U.S. has also invaded or bombed dozens of countries and supported nearly every single right-wing dictatorship in the world since the end of World War II. It has overthrown or attempted to overthrow dozens of foreign governments since 1949 and has actively sought to crush nearly every single people's liberation movement over the same period. And it has also meddled in, a, in scores of elections in countries that are allies and adversaries alike. That was from a Telesur English article. Um, that's really all I wanted to say, that, you know, it would be easily proven, really, if Julian Assange was smearing excrement all over the walls of the Ecuadorian embassy and or doing any of the other things that he's been accused of um, it would be easy to, to prove that. And the reason there isn't any proof out there in the mainstream media, any videos, is because it isn't true. So this is just a, an, this is a, a effort by, again, the mainstream media stupidly cutting their own throats, basically, by, dehumanize, by dehumanizing a journalist, publisher, um, so that it can be much easier, pu with public opinion, it can be much easier. They won't push back on his extradition to the U.S. for absolute torture and solitary confinement and for 45 years and possibly even execution because that's the kind of administration they have right there now with John Bolton and uh, people like that. They're bloodthirsty psychopaths. So, you know, we have to, we have to never forget Julian Assange and be constant, putting constant pressure on these 
on these governments that just are, um, they're all, they all don't want their lies exposed. So none of, no government really is interested in having him free and they want to make an example of him so that nobody else ever does that again. That's what this is, making an example of him so everybody is frightened out of their wits to whistle blow, like see what happens to Chelsea Manning, to, um, to be a publisher and release whistleblower information, see what happens to Julian Assange, see what happens, what will happen to you if you do this. This is a, the end of the free press if he is allowed to be extradited. And you can, whoever argues about that is some kind of troll for imperialism is a troll is either ignorant or is trolling to continue the narrative that he does not deserve, he's, that he's not a journalist, which is what even stupid stenographers calling themselves journalists say, or that he is, um, you know, he, whatever, that he doesn't deserve protection, that he's released secrets, as in that have put people's lives in danger. That has not been proven either. You know, it is all false and it's all disgusting. It disgusts me. And my government... The Australian government disgusts me the most. They are disgusting, and I am ashamed. Uh, they, they do not represent me, as I've said before. So anyway, um, and most governments do not, rep or pretty much all governments don't represent the people anymore. They're just doing their own thing, and uh, we're just cogs in the wheel of capitalism for them to line their pockets. And, and these wars, people who go to these wars and kill other people that are poor people too, are just um, thrown away at the end. They're discarded. Poor people going over to kill other poor people in other countries, and it's all to line the pockets of oligarchs. That's what this is all about. But people can only support this sort of thing and allow it to continue. I'm talking about war now. If they have some kind of seed of racism there somewhere, because... Um, you know, if, if everybody stood up and said it is, it is wrong what we, would do, we are doing to brown people overseas for resources and hegemony, these war crimes every single day, if everybody stood up and said this is wrong and said I'm not going to vote for you if you continue to these, vote for these politicians, I'm not going to vote for you if you continue on uh, signing bills and, uh, you know, promoting imperialist wars, if everybody said that in the U.S., these these people they're they're more they're more they care more about their careers than anything. They would probably have to rethink what they're doing. So really, even though you know yes, capitalism is a big problem and the poverty draft is a big problem and so forth, and you know people need to understand the operational reality of a sovereign economy via you know an understanding of MMT, so that they can understand how to change things and push politicians to change things in an economic sense. But really, that is not going to solve the problem of war, of uh, the ongoing perpetual war. Because if people do not think that it's, it do not have the same sort of empathy for brown people overseas that are being murdered, a million plus in Iraq now, uh, then, then, why, what, then, then they're not going to be saying, I'm not going to vote for you, such and such. You know, I'm not going to vote for you until you stop these wars. It's not going to be a priority. If we don't see ourselves in these people, in these countries, these brown people in these countries, that, and, you know, and, and Muslim-majority countries too, if we don't see uh, that you know, they are just like us and we don't have the same sort of... Uh, sorry, it's a bit sunny here. We don't have the same kind of uh, care about uh, you know, them as we do for our own families and uh, friends, etc., and we should then we're going to, doesn't matter, even if everybody understands how the operational reality of the economy works and we start pushing politicians to do the right thing and to stop lying to us that they can't afford free health care and so forth. If we, if we don't have this sort of dis disregard for these people in these other countries that we are killing and we're not saying anything, then uh, it, do, it won't matter if we, even if we understand, even if there was no... Um, even if the poverty draft didn't exist, people will still join uh, the military because they will have these patriotic ideas and American exceptionalism ideas that have been indoctrinated into them. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't, and, and they'll probably continue in one way or another. They'll start, you know, there's a whole lot of 
um, ways that you can, you know, they'll find ways to get people to join, and they're already doing that now, join the military. So if we're complicit in these, these, these murderous things going on uh, if we're not saying anything. So it's not enough, you know, to, to sort of think that um, the understanding of things, uh, the economy and being able to push these people to, to do the right thing by us is going to end these wars. It will help for, sh for sure to end a poverty draft. It will definitely help. But it's, you know, if, we're, if, we, if, we, if we don't care about other people overseas, brown people, just because they're not like us in quotes, then, you know, uh, there'll, be, there'll be ways that these things will continue. And, and uh, I could see that they'd probably do some sort of conscription again. That might help bring an end to the war. When suddenly, when people see that their sons and daughters are being murdered and maimed, uh, you know, and, and they're being conscripted, that might actually end some wars. That's the problem. There is no conscription. So people don't have this sort of, they're divorced from all of it. That's what helped end the Vietnam War. And they knew that. And that's why now it's, they've found a different way of forcing people to join through inequality and poverty. Anyway, I'm rambling on now, but I'm, this, is all, so this is all connected. And um, so I hope that you will um, speak out for Julian Assange if you haven't already. And uh, there's a, been a, a petition. I don't know if it'll be successful. I, I, I just feel like my government is just such a U.S. lackey that it won't do anything. But there's a petition with about 120,000 signatures on it that was set, um, set off by uh, Philip Adams, a, a radio announcer here in Australia. And it's going to, it was um, put to the Parliament just recently, I think, uh, the Australian Parliament. And I don't know, though, if it will actually be taken seriously or they'll do anything. This is the terrible thing. It doesn't matter how many people uh, call out for something. If the U.S. wants the Australian government to, to do its bidding, you know, it's like, how high, you know? How high can I jump for you? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you like the content on Faint Signals from Vega. It's at Vegan Trove on YouTube. Please uh, hit, um, hit the like button if you're at the YouTube channel. And uh, please leave comments. I always enjoy comments. Um, so thanks so much for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.